Today I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with Fred Frederick Dugray from H2O Innovation. How are you today, Frederick? I'm doing great. Yourself, Tracy? Frederick, H2O Innovation, of course, just had a tremendous year for achieving benchmarks, and you have just been working basically day and night. You have to be. And I see that you just announced again uh, the commissioning of the largest ultrafiltration project to date in Colorado. All right. This seems like big news to me. Can you tell us more about that? Thank you. Well, it is certainly an important achievement for the company itself. Uh, again, the, the project in Clifton that we delivered a few, uh, a few weeks ago is an important milestone both in our business plan and in terms of commercial uh, development. We launched only 24 months ago this new technology called the FiberFlex, uh, which essentially provides the customer with a strong advantage to interchange different membrane modules when it comes to membrane replacement. So it gives tremendous ability and advantage for the end user to, to use this platform, and it was the first successful um, uh, commissioning that we have done on it. Since then, uh, we signed 15 more new projects using the similar platform. Okay, and for those of our shareholders and investors out there that may not understand this completely, I know I'm learning a lot more about this. You've basically taken water from the Colorado River and turned it into drinking water, is that correct? That's correct. And that's what this system does, is that correct? Exactly. So it's a drinking water uh, application uh, for the district of uh, Clifton in Colorado. And of course, I also read that you have brought in new contracts, uh, just over 7.6 million, and that you're at a you've got a sales backlog to a record high of over 50 million. Is that correct? Yes. This is a new uh, a new record high for us. A 51 million dollar in backlog. Um, the, the latest projects we have announced uh, that bundles to a $7.6 million are three projects. Um, again, it's not a surprise for us. It was uh, by design. We added and expanded our sales team uh, over the last year. So finally, it's a result of these efforts. Um, as I said earlier, we also launched um, new innovations, including the FiberFlex. Uh, in the $7.6 million, there is one project using the FiberFlex uh, in BC, in British Columbia. Um, so again, to see this backlog growing to a $51 million uh, level, again, is not a surprise. We see our sales pipeline is getting bigger and bigger. The average size of projects also are getting bigger. And obviously the demand for water infrastructure in, in southern U.S. is also uh, uh, pretty uh, demanding. So. Okay, and I understand that you just brought in your first significant project in British Columbia. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, for us it is the first project in BC for the community of Englishman River. Uh, it is a, a significant size project for us, um, as we'll be commissioning also and in installing a, a water treatment plant, drinking water application, uh, again using this uh, ultrafiltration platform called the FiberFlex. There's two things that we have happening, too, that are coming up. Number one, you're going to be the keynote speaker at the Clean Tech and Technology Metal Summit, specifically on clean tech. Can you talk to us a little bit about the themes that you're planning on addressing? Well, I think, you know, the, 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 the theme of these days is definitely water reuse, and it is one of our key expertise. When I say water reuse, is how can we use um, technology to clean uh, sewage water or uh, industrial water and turn it into either water for irrigation or water for replenishing uh, aquifers or uh, groundwater reserves. Um, it is definitely a field of expertise of H2O and it is an important nexus in these days. If you look, for example, at the, I don't know if you saw in the news, but the current price increase in vegetables and fruits, it, it's quite amazing to see how this could potentially leads to a water shortage as well and and that's why I think you know today being able to provide solutions for small mid-sized community uh, with water reuse solutions will help them to better um, uh, face the shortage but also uh, provide you know solutions for their existing either agriculture needs or uh, municipal needs. And of course, I would like to just reinforce to the investment community and the investor intel audience that you do have a sales pipeline of over 50 million. Is that correct? Well, the backlog is 51 million. The sales pipeline is much bigger, is, is, is north of 100 million as we speak right now. Um, but again, what we announce and what we present as numbers is, sales, is a sales backlog, uh, which are sales that are already secured under contract that we need to deliver in the coming quarters. 
what a lovely way to be corrected. I think what else I'd like to add is right now the Canadian dollar is at a 13-year low and of course you sell most of your technology to the U.S. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, in our current backlog, I would say about 70-75% of our sales are currently in the U.S. market. Um, and we do have strong profit center coming from our uh, divisions such as PWT, the chemical division, the coupling division, Piedmont, or both are very successful um, divisions uh, based in the U.S., providing strong um, profitability and contributing, obviously, to the, uh, to the whole uh, consolidation of our results. Um, however, some costs uh, on executing these projects are also in U.S. dollars. Um, so, yes, we do benefit to some extent of, of the US, uh, strong U.S. currency. I'd also like to just uh, reiterate that you're not new to the water game. You were one of the first leaders and entrepreneurs in this industry. Can you just uh, back up and tell us how you got involved in uh, the launch of H2O Innovation? Well, it happened 15 years ago. Um, if you remember in 2000 or early 2000, there was this crisis in Walkerton, Ontario, where seven people died from E. coli contamination. So for me, it was to some extent the, the vision I had was like, wow, how can we provide again, better solution for these small communities because I feel that it's, it's the poorly served market right now. And it's still today, the small mid-sized communities needs help, needs solutions, need well-adapted technology to, to fit with their needs. They have limited resources. They have limited personnel. So since the beginning, it was the vision that I've been pushing forward to uh, make sure that we're going to address this market and provide solutions for communities just like Walkerton. Um, across Canada and the U.S. So what should we, Frederick, as shareholders, anticipate over maybe the next two quarters and early on for 2016? Well, starting with a strong backlog, sales backlog of $51 million, uh, we're just going to execute this backlog and turn it into sales in the coming quarters. Uh, so this gives excellent visibility in the coming quarters, obviously. Um, the second thing also is that all of our different divisions, uh, PWT, Piedmont, all the specialty products and services or contributing uh, significantly to the profitability and the growth as well. They're doing tremendously well. Um, so this should impact positively as well the coming quarters. Second also, um, the innovations that we put forward and presented and start to launch more, um, including the fiber flex um, for the ultrafiltration, as I announced earlier, allowing us to secure numerous new projects. The SPMC, a software we have developed to make sure that we provide um, sustain uh, support to these small communities are all innovations contributing to improving the gross margin continuously. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's nice to speak with you. Thank you very much, Tracy.